The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. He is risen I want to say that again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. He is risen Amen. I never want to say that mechanically. I'm truly delighted to be able to pronounce upon you the good news that the Lord is with us. And I'm truly, truly excited to say that the tomb is empty. That Christ is risen. Amen, amen. I'm Pastor Richard Allen Farmer, Catherine's son, Rosemary's husband, and Tim's dad. Amen, amen, amen. I sent my son a text yesterday, and it simply said, I called him by a nickname I have for him, which I shall not share with you. And I said, I was just thinking about how my life has changed since you're in it I love you and he shot back I love you too daddy and we had just a little text moment yesterday that almost moved me to tears uh, I'm a weepy sort anyway uh, but I'm delighted to be Tim's dad and God's child amen I have a few announcements for you and then Bill Small will come and share with us a couple of others very very quickly there's a pastor led cruise to Alaska June 23-30, 2023, uh, just a little less than a year from now. If you're interested in going to that on that cruise, I have information and you may see me uh, at the door as you leave today. A new members class started today and it is not too late for you to get in on it. It meets at 9.30 a.m. Sunday school time in room 22 and if you are interested in pursuing membership at Crossroads or you'd like to simply know what we're all about, uh, the class does not obligate you to become a member of Crossroads, but your looking at Crossroads would begin with your going to that new members class. Uh, if you are interested, I simply refer you to announcement number one. Uh, please be mindful of that. And if you're interested in helping us with backpacks for uh, needy students, uh, please uh, read that announcement and govern yourselves accordingly. There is bread, uh, I should say there are bread and pastry products available at the end of worship out these doors and to the right there'll be a table. Please clear it. Please take as much bread as you can use. Uh, please do not waste it. Please take enough for you and perhaps some neighbors. But uh, help us distribute that bread. And last, my last announcement, well, I have two actually. Uh, please stay after service today. We're going to have the rollout of our new church website. Uh, I hope that you've brought your tablet or your laptop or perhaps just your phone. Uh, and you can follow along as Ephraim Curry and uh, perhaps others will lead us through the rollout of the new church website. The final announcement, and I checked this this morning, make sure that I'm supposed to announce this to the entire church. But Dr. Uh, Olawasolu will celebrate his 50th birthday in a gala celebration on September 10 at the Grand Royale Events Center on Covington Highway, and the entire congregation is invited. I called Bimisola this morning, and I said, now, am I supposed to announce this to everybody? She said, yes, everybody. Uh, so it is, it is again, uh, a wonderful insight into uh, cultural norms. The entire church is invited uh, to Dr. Alawasalu's or Al Al Alawasalu's uh, birthday, and you'll be excited about that. Uh, the attire is any shades of blue or any shades of green. And she has down here on this, on this invitation, I'm just reading this now, no African time, please. I said, well, the event is 6 p.m. To midnight. It's 6 p.m. to midnight. People are going to be coming in and out, and nobody's going to stay for six hours. She said, yes, but I don't want people to show up at 9 or 10. She said, Africans will come at 9 or 10, just near the close. So no African time, please. Thank you. I'm just reading. The, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reading the announcement. Brother Bill. <laughs> That's kind of a hard act to follow. I want to add one note to the announcement of, about the backpacks. They are due next Sunday. 
So this is your only week, if you haven't done it already, to put the backpacks together and put them in the church office labeled for Kids Zone and for students at Redan Elementary. So please, please be aware of that deadline. Uh, it's hard to believe, but it's actually also time for Operation Kids Zone. So please see the announcements, see the kinds of things that they're looking for. Oh, that's OCC, I'm sorry if I misspoke, Operation Christmas Child. Um, in July, it seems kind of hard to think about Operation Christmas Child, but it's the time to stock up on the items that are in the announcement. It's a great time to shop because a lot of things are on sale for going back to school. So please, there will be a box out in the Narthex labeled Operation Christmas Child, and please begin to bring stuff in in anticipation of that season, if you would. Finally, there's a note from Dawn Ellis in the Heartlines expressing her gratitude for support from the church for her and for her family in the death of her brother, Noel. So please um, give Don a hug for us. And I, I ask you to stand for our call to worship. As we begin to worship together this morning, it is a responsive reading from Psalms 47. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. Amen. Please stay standing for our opening hymn of praise. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing his power and his love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy is space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is his path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, the tongue can recite, it breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust, and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. O maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. Amen. We have an opportunity now to pray together to confess our sins to God and to confess with confidence because we know that he hears us. So let's pray this together and let's make sure that as we pray, it's not just words on the screen, but it's words from our heart. So let's pray together. Sovereign God, we confess that we often treat you as less important than you are. We think of you as our co-pilot, our consultant, our friend, who will confirm our opinions when in reality you are all-powerful and infinitely wiser than we. Help us, Lord, to submit to your authority 
and be your obedient children. However many times you must remind us and start us back on the right way. Help us to trust you fully in everything that worries us and every step we take. Let's pray silently for just a moment. Father, we're so grateful that you hear us, and we pray that those words would express the true thoughts of our heart, and that you would draw us closer to you with your forgiveness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. There is good news to hear. Our assurance of pardon comes from Isaiah, and hear the good news from Scripture. Hear what the Lord says. I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Please stay standing for our praise song. He brought me out of the miry clay, planted my feet, he directs my way. Given my heart reason to rejoice, and unto him will I lift my voice. You did not ask me for sacrifice, your precious blood it has paid the price. I am delivered from sin and death, we worship you Lord with every breath. You have put in my mouth a new song, a song of praise for all you've done. You have put in my mouth a new song, my life has shouted all day long. He brought me out of the miry clay, planted my feet, he directs my way. Given my heart reason to rejoice, and unto him will I lift my voice. You did not ask me for sacrifice, your precious blood it has paid the price. I am delivered from sin and death, we worship you Lord with every breath. You have put in my mouth a new song, a song of praise for all you've done. You have put in my mouth a new song, my life will shout it all day long. You have put in my mouth a new song, a song of praise for all you've done. You have put in my mouth a new song, my life will shout it all day long, my life will shout it all day long, my life will shout it all day long. We want to trust in God. We want to hold to his hand because he never changes and he will guide us through whatever comes our way. Time is filled with swift transition Not a look can stand Build your homes so dizzy 
Susan Small and other worship leaders who take the time to craft um, original prayers to be used in our worship service. Uh, this morning when I read that prayer of confession, it said much of what I would like to say. Uh, thank you for helping us find new words to articulate our thoughts before our God. We continue to rejoice in the growth of this church and in uh, new people who are 
here working and ministering and whom you have uh, taken note of, of whom you've taken note and whom you have elected to serve in very specific ways. I'm going to ask uh, Rosalind Fuse Hall to come forward, please. And I'm going to ask uh, Elder John Matthews to come and assist me as he did at the last um, ordination. And Ros, you just come stand here, please. We rejoice that you have seen in Ros Fuse Hall something that would uh, be attractive enough for her to serve on the diaconate. We look forward to what she's going to contribute uh, to the work here. I have questions for you, Roz Fuse Hall. I will ask you those questions and I will prompt you. You will answer the question either I will or I do. And then John Matthews will ask questions of the congregation. Uh, regarding this and then we will lay hands on you and pray for you. We'll ask you to kneel at that chair and we will help you back up. <laughs> I had a kneeling cushion up here that I often use on Sunday mornings. Oh, it is there. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, it had been missing. Yes, please put that there for, uh, for Roz. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're very happy about that, aren't you? <laughs> Ross, would you please face me and answer these questions? Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, and acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique an authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you, do you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you? I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture? And will you be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity? And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I will. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. And finally, Roz Fuse Hall, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless, and those in need, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may have them stand. Oh, please stand. This is with great joy that we are uh, ordaining and installing uh, Roz. And we have some questions for you. Do we, the members of this church, accept as a deacon chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. We do. do we agree to pray 
for Roz to encourage her to respect her decisions and to follow as she guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church. I agree. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to ask all ordained elders, even if you're not from this church, if you're an ordained elder in the Presbyterian Church, would you please come forward and assist us as we lay hands on Roz. Roz, you may kneel. Lay your hands lightly on her <laughs> and lightly on the shoulders, perhaps, of the person behind whom you are standing. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this, your servant, Roz Fuse Hall. We thank you for bringing her to us. We thank you for the gifts you have entrusted to her. We can hardly wait to see what you will do through her and in her as she functions and continues to function in this body of believers. We thank you for your calling. Thank you for allowing us to be your servants and to work your work and to proclaim your word in this world in which we live. We pray your anointing upon her. Grant her wisdom beyond her years, I pray. I pray you give her insight and light to replace any darkness that might present itself. I pray, O oh God, that you'd use her in the lives of people that you would use her as a witness, as an encourager, as a servant in the lives of broken and disenfranchised people who desperately need to hear a word from you. May it come through you, this, your servant, Roz. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do, for what you're going to say. Bless her as she learns to work with others here. Bless her as she learns their personalities, their quirks, as they work together. I pray, O oh God, that you'd grant them unity that bespeaks what you've called us to. We thank you for your great, great riches that you have given to us in Jesus the Christ. And we pray now in his name that you would use Roz for kingdom purposes. We stand against the enemy who would love to see her fail, who would love to discourage her, who would love to see her uh, backtrack and love to see her go in directions that are not good for her. We stand against the one who would love to see her run into one or two people that would discourage her and she gives up the whole thing. I pray against that in the strong name of Jesus who calls us to himself and who calls us to unity. Now have your way in her, we pray, O oh God, and we shall give you the glory and you the credit as you make of her the servant she is destined to be. We pray for ourselves, if we dare, pray that we would work together for your glory, for your purposes, and we give you thanks and praise in the strong name of Jesus, our Savior, Lord of the church. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Let's help her up. <laughs> bless you. Bless you, Deacon. Bless you. Bless you. As we go to prayer today, I want to add to the prayer list Chet Fuller, who had a heart attack while at a bowling alley on Friday. 
Uh, his daughter called me, and she opened with, Pastor, I know this is your day off, but I know you'd want to know. And then she uh, told me that her father had had a heart attack, was unresponsive at the bowling alley, and they took him to Piedmont Rockdale and worked on him and got him stabilized and then transferred him to Piedmont, Atlanta, where he is now. They inserted three stints in his heart. There was major blockage there, and he is resting comfortably. I spoke with Pearl Friday night, and uh, we ask you to be in prayer for Chet uh, Fuller. His wife told me uh, humorously uh, that it was his turn to bowl, and he was sitting there, and she said, Get up, old man, it's your turn. And he didn't get up. And she went over to him, and he was unresponsive, and that's how they knew there was a, a problem. But she was teasing him, and um, they found out he was in distress. And she was so grateful. She was celebrating. She said, sometimes he doesn't want to go bowling uh, with me. And she said, if he had stayed home, uh, he might have expired. Might have expired. So God be praised that he felt like going bowling that day, and he was with Pearl uh, when he was stricken. Uh, we also give thanks as we go to prayer for Paula Haywood, Terrence's sister, who is home and who thanks us for our prayers in her behalf. You see listed before you in the heart lines, which I hope you'll take with you every week and use as a prayer guide, but you see before you uh, the many people in our congregation who are in need of prayer. We've been praying for Larry Steele over the last several weeks, and Larry is here today. Um, we are grateful. Right. He's walking more slowly, but he's walking. Uh, as my late grandfather said one time, I said to him, Pop, how you doing? He said, I'm still kicking, just not as high. <laughs> and Larry is still kicking, just not as high. But he's here. Amen. And that's an answer to prayer. That's an answer to prayer. We continue to pray for these listed and, uh, and there are some who are not listed, who are known to you, part of your circle of friends and family. <coughs> Excuse me. I want you to uh, add to your prayer list as well, please. Uh, my preparation for this um, series of sermons uh, in October, all the Sundays, there are five Sundays in October, and I'm planning now, beginning the research now on a series called Five Hot Topics. Uh, the first Sunday I plan to preach on the immigration issue, and these are going to be biblical responses to these cultural issues. And then the second Sunday I'll preach on the LGBTQA plus uh, issue, biblical response to that. I'll be preaching on politics and... Um, get all five of them in the correct order here. Uh, but I, I would ask your prayers. This is going to be a, a difficult series to write and to preach. Uh, immigration, LGBTQA+, the third Sunday, politics, fourth Sunday, capital punishment, and the fifth Sunday, abortion. And I would ask you to be in prayer and to be present as well. Uh, I may need some bodyguards, maybe by, <laughs> by the time I get to that last one. Um, but please be in prayer for me and make that part of your prayer these next weeks. Let us pray. Papa, we thank you that we get to pray again. Yes. We have already prayed in this service more than once and we count it not robbery to approach your throne again. Oh, that we might be accused of being a prayerful people. Oh, that we might be accused of having lots of prayers in our worship service. Grant to us a hunger and a thirst for you. We thank you for our brothers and sisters with whom we stand today. 
We stand with them in their distress. We stand with them in their celebrations. We praise you along with them for the very good things that are happening. And we stand with them as they petition you for miracles, for changes, for reversals of doctors' statements and prognoses. We rejoice that you hear us and that you are with us and that you are for us. We would lift these names that are written here and thank you that you know their cases. You know each one of these people. We pray for Chet Fuller, whose name we've added. And thank you that in your providence, he did not stay home. Thank you that he was able to get help immediately. We thank you for paramedics and other first responders who so faithfully serve us. We give you thanks for them. We thank you for access to good health care, for the ability to be transported to places and get good quality help. We do not take for granted what you are doing in our bodies. We pray for those who are doing their grief work, those whose losses are recent, <coughs> and those whose losses are several years old, but who are still working through this. We give you thanks that you are the great comforter of the brokenhearted. We would pray for the United States of America. We will never stop praying that you would change the hearts of women and men who serve in our political arena. So many of them have no interest in justice have no interest in serving the people. They've gotten a cushy job and they're enjoying it. But I pray that you turn their hearts toward that which is right. I pray that you'd give them a desire to rule justly, to think of the poor, the broken, the needy, the disenfranchised, the alienated, the ones who have no access. I pray that you'd remind them why they were elected. And that you take from them self-interest and make them other directed in their work and in their service. We pray for the leaders of our nation for the president, for the vice president, for every senator, for every member of the House of Representatives, for every governor, for every mayor, for every city council and its members, for every alderman, for every county supervisor, for every person in political leadership I pray that they would hear your voice, that you'd break through the cacophony of their own lives, and that you would be heard speaking through the noise, proclaiming your good news, your justice. May they find themselves embracing it and then proclaiming it as well. We rejoice that you hear us when we pray. We thank you. We pray for the ministries of this church, for the initiatives to which we've given ourselves, for Kids Zone, for small groups, for outreaches, for Zumba, for diabetes management classes as they resume for all those opportunities we have to serve
the people among whom we find ourselves for food distribution, both from movie sets and through Atlanta Food Bank. I pray, God, that you'd use us to deliver good news and needed services, especially to those who are nearest to us. Help us to know how to serve them. Help us to know what to do. When anyone comes onto our grounds, grant that we may represent light and hope and joy and Jesus. We thank you for what you are doing. We pray that you would continue to use us, to anoint us for good work. May we glorify you, not only by what we do, but by the way in which we do it. We beg this. In the name of the Father, we entreat thee in the name of the Son. We implore thee in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 If you are visiting us for the first time in our sanctuary today, we are honored to have you. And would you please stand where you are? If you're a first time visitor in our sanctuary today, would you please stand? If you're a first-time visitor, would you please stand? Amen. We have one brother in the back. Yes, please give us your, uh, let's wait for a microphone. We need a microphone. Uh, we have two persons standing. All right, yes. Young, young lady, you have the microphone. Yes. Tell us who you are and where you're visiting from. Wonderful. You're local. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And your first time here. Thank you for coming to Crossroads today. Your fourth time. First time in a morning worship service. Wonderful. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please tell us your name and where you're visiting from, whether you're local or visiting from out of town. Uh, Yes, good morning. My name is Leonardo Harris. I came here with my cousin, uh, Ruth Crosby. I'm from, uh, I'm from Atlanta, uh, my, my, my church is the True Church of the Living Faith with uh, Bishop Christian. Very good, thank you for being with us. Thank you for accepting your cousin Ruth's invitation to be with us. Yes, we have two more on this side. Yes. Good morning, I'm visiting for the first time. I'm a member of Word of Faith Family Worship Cathedral, Bishop Dale C. Bronner, and I'm here with my husband, Raymond. And your name is? Virginia Barnes. Virginia, thank you so much for being with us. And you are related to Raymond, who is the new guy in the sound booth. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Chanel. I'm with my aunt and uncle, and I'm visiting from New York. From New York City or from New York State? Where, Where in New York? New York City. Yes, wonderful. What borough? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Well, that's a... <laughs> Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, you should have received a green visitor's card as you stood. Please fill that out and give it to an usher or to me at the door as you exit this day. And thank you very much for being with us. Did I overlook anyone else? I'm, I'm speaking for my grandniece who won't get up. This is Kinsley. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. <laughs> wait. All right, Lasandra Brown, yes, you are not a visitor, and why are you speaking for somebody? Because she won't get up. She won't get up? No. Why not? Because she's 12 and she's shy. Because she's 12 and she's shy. Mm-hmm. But this is her first time, and you're going to speak is. for her. Yes. And her name is? Kinsley, and she's visiting with me from South Carolina, so she'll be with me for two weeks. Wonderful. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and if you are visiting with us for the first time online, would you please drop an email to Richard Allen Farmer 1951 at gmail.com. That Allen is spelled A L L E N, Richard Allen Farmer 1951 at gmail.com. If you just put in the subject line, was with you today as a first timer, I would be happy to respond to you. I promise you a personal and 
a speedy reply. If you'll drop me that email today, I will answer you before this day is concluded. Bless you and thank you for being with us. Well, it's giving time at Crossroads, and we are delighted to give of our substance to the Lord. The Lord has simply allowed us to be stewards of uh, so many resources, and we gladly, with great, great joy, uh, bring a portion of that to the Lord. Some of you have given online. Some of you have authorized bank drafts. Some of you have brought checks by the church building uh, during the week. And however you have given, some of you give once a month, and you've already given uh, this month, uh, and you don't, uh, you're not giving an offering this morning. But would you please stand, those of you in the sanctuary, and if you're not giving an offering this morning, if you're giving an offering, would you hold that offering up? If you're not giving an offering, just hold up your hand to represent your giving yourself and your resources to God, and let us pray together. God the giver, we thank you for these resources you have entrusted to us. As we give, we do so with grateful hearts. With cheerfulness, we return a portion of your gifts that Crossroads Church may care for the financially distressed, spread the gospel to the nations, address economic and political injustices, create and sustain ministries that develop disciples of Jesus the Christ. As we give, we pray that you, holy God, will teach us how to give. May our motives be pure, our hearts be glad, and our hands be open. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are giving an offering this morning, would you please bring it forward as we will not be passing the plates. Bless you. for the opportunity to give to you. And Father, we pray that you would take these offerings, these tithes, and take our lives too, and use them to glorify yourself. And we will be grateful to be used by you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our sister Christy played during the offering a hymn I've not heard for um, a while. It is found at number 402 in our hymnal, and I want to just read the text, and maybe we'll even sing that chorus. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me, 
This is by Fanny Crosby, the blind hymnist. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful savior is Jesus my Lord. He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. With numberless blessings each moment he crowns and filled with his fullness divine, I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God, for such a redeemer as mine. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky, his perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high, he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. What a wonderful thought. My maternal grandmother and my late pastor were both full-bodied people. They were both large. And I still remember how safe I felt when I was hugging them, they covered me. I always felt secure when with them. Fanny Crosby says, when, when God holds you, you're all right. He hideth my soul, he covers me there with his hand. Uh, Christy, would you just put us in uh, perhaps uh, D flat? Are you at? Are you at the hymnal? Wonderful, wonderful. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the that shadows that shadows are dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there. And covers me. Uh. Father, we thank you that you've got us. That you hold us. That you cover us that you protect us, that you love us, and hold us closely to thyself. We rejoice. We feel so safe. Thank you that we're covered. You are a wonderful Savior. And we bless your name. Now teach us to hide in thee, in whom there is great safety and joy and salvation and hope. We thank you. In the strong name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, musicians and worship planners, leaders, AV team, all that you do to make this happen. I am 70 years old. I know I don't look it, thank you. <laughs> I was telling someone this past week, I still am so excited about Sunday morning. 
I, I've never gotten over it. I haven't become cynical. I, when I was a child, Sunday was the best day of the week. I could hardly wait for Sunday. Sunday, I was going to see those people. And Sunday, I was going to sing those songs. And Sunday, I was going to hear preaching. And there was something, I couldn't articulate it then as I can now, but, but something happened on Sunday that didn't happen any, of the, any other day of the week in that way. And here I am, years later, after that first light was lit, and I'm still so excited. On Saturday night, I'm like a kid before Christmas. Sunday morning is coming. And Sunday morning, I get to see those people. I get to sing those songs. I get to hear those prayers. I get to preach that word. I hope you haven't gotten tired of this because this is great. This that happens, or we, we worship during the week and we sing songs during the week, but there's no other day where this happens. This. And I trust that you will look forward to what God wants to say to us on a given Sunday morning. And that you'll never get over it. The wonder of it. I, I'm, still, I'm still overwhelmed by the thought of it all. If you're able, would you please stand for the reading of the word of God? I want to read but one verse from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, through which I have been slowly preaching over the last weeks. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27 only. From the New King James Version of the Scriptures, it is speaking of Moses. He's introduced in verse 23, and then several episodes from his life are addressed. I want to look at this episode spoken of um, in verse 27, and I'm going to read the verse twice. By faith he, Moses, forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he, Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who, in, who is invisible. This is the word of the Lord. You, you may be seated. I want to take my title of this sermon from the second clause of Hebrews 11:27. By faith he, Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. And I'm calling this, I ain't scared. Now, O oh Lord, may the words of this mouth and the meditation of these hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Egypt was a place of splendor. Moses had experienced in Egypt great privilege. He had access to great power, wealth. And this text says he forsook it all. Did that give you pause? It did me. He forsook it all? The language is so specific it doesn't even say that he forsook parts of the privilege. It isn't as if Moses forsook the educational aspect of living in Pharaoh's house and retained the economic component. It's not as if he enjoyed the housing piece but forsook the access to transportation. No, he forsook everything. Gave up the chariots, gave up the servants in Pharaoh's house, gave up the 
first class education to which he was entitled as the grandson, the surrogate grandson of the Pharaoh, gave it all up. And in his forsaking, he is surely facing consequences. There would be repercussions if you turn your back on everything. This text says that that didn't concern him. He didn't fear the wrath of the king. And surely the king would be offended. Surely the king would be angry. I, I did all this for you and you what? Oh, you want no part of this? Oh, you don't even want to bear my name? Oh, you don't even want to say you came from here? Oh, oh, it's like that. Oh, so you're just going to walk away after all I've done for you. This text says he wasn't concerned about that. The Pharaoh could have become violent, could have become angry. He had been good to Moses. And now Moses seems to be rejecting everything he had done for him. My friend, Pastor Stephen Davey of the Shepherd's Church in Cary, North Carolina, suggests that Moses' 120 years on the earth could be divided into three 40-year periods. First 40 years, opulence in Pharaoh's palace. Second 40 years, obscurity in Midian after he murdered an Egyptian. Third 40-year period, oversight as he leads the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 2, we read of Moses acting in fear, but he was not always afraid. This text in Hebrews 11.27 says there was a forsaking of Egypt that was not attached to fear. He did not fear the wrath of the king. How do you get to that point where you can stick your chest out and turn your back on everything that's been given to you and not be afraid? I would like to know. I think you'd like to know too because if you just keep on living, you'll face an experience like this. If not quite like this, something like this. Where you'll have to stand up to that which is offered you and say a no to it and feel good about your answer. Where you'll have to stand up in those places which could put great fear in you and say, I'm not afraid of the wrath of the king or the wrath of the employer, or the wrath of the landlord, or the wrath of the neighborhood. The reason Moses could be unafraid is right here in this text. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, because or for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Kent Hughes, uh, retired pastor, the pastor emeritus of the College Church in Wheaton, Illinois, calls this future certitude. He can endure this Moses. He can forsake Egypt, this Moses. He can be unafraid, this Moses, because he sees the one who is invisible. He's, he's seen something. Kent Hughes wrote, I know what would produce such faith in each one of us. 60 seconds in heaven. 15 seconds to view the face of Christ. 15 seconds to survey the angelic host. 15 seconds to glimpse heaven's architecture. And 15 seconds to behold the face of a loved one now glorified. 
Hughes continues, that is all it would take. But God is not going to do that for any of us. I could pray until I was blue in the face and I wouldn't get a second in heaven until eternity. I know what else would do it, Kent Hughes goes on to say, and that is simply what Moses did. Believing God's word. And we can all do that now. If we're having trouble believing, we ought to read these passages carefully, then ask God for the capability to believe, and then believe. End of quote. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, because he believed. That's faith. It is seeing that which is ahead and not knowing all the details, only knowing that God is at work in me and for me. That gives me the ability to stand before the king and not be afraid. Whatever Moses saw in Egypt, what he saw in the invisible God was more beautiful. You see it in the text? By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Apparently, what he saw in God in his future was even more beautiful than the splendor of Egypt. Wow. Huh. Do you remember that classic hymn? And I was raised on hymns. I will never be comfortable in a service with all contemporary music all the time. I, I want it all. I want contemporary, but I, I want classic hymns. They, they simply say some things we need to say. There's a hymn by Hoffman that compares the natural created order to the beauty of Jesus the Christ. It's called Ferris Lord Jesus. Ferris Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, thou my soul's glory, joy, and crown. Fair are the meadows, fairer still the woodlands, robed in the blooming garb of spring. Jesus is fairer. Jesus is purer, who makes the woeful heart to sing. Do you hear it? There's beauty all around me, but Jesus is even more beautiful. There's splendor all around me, but Jesus is even more splendid. Fair is the sunshine, Hoffman continues. Fair is still the moonlight. And all the twinkling starry host. Jesus shines brighter. Jesus shines purer than all the angels heaven can boast. Do you hear it? There is beauty all around, but, but God is even more beautiful. Well, that's what Moses comes to. The, the palace is fair and beautiful, but the unseen God is even more fair and more beautiful. The palace is splendid, but God is splendor personified. And the only reason Moses is not scared is because he has seen something. He has seen a spiritual future in which the God who is normally not visible has been seen. And therefore, I ain't scared, says Moses. I've seen him who is normally not visible. Look at our text again. Moses was able to endure because of the look of faith. This future certitude. Moses saw something. Verse 26 says that he looked to the reward. Verse 27 says that he saw him who is invisible. Now, invisible does not mean that a person or object can't be seen. Invisible means that the person or object is not now 
seen. Moses has been trying for years to see God. But God hides himself. In fact, God knows that if he really displayed himself to Moses, Moses wouldn't be able to take it. It would be overwhelming. You, you don't want any of this. You can picture God saying to Moses, you can't handle this. Exodus 33 Verse 18, and Moses said, please show me your glory to God. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious. I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here's a place by me. So you shall stand on the rock. So shall it be while my glory passes by. That I'll put you in the cleft of the rock. He hideth my soul. In the cleft of the rock. And I'll cover you with my hand. While I pass by. Then I'll take away my hand. And you shall see my back. But you can't see my face. At this point. I'm going to be invisible. Let me give you three observations from Hebrews 11:27 Faith in a credible God gives us the courage to forsake our Egypts in all forms There are some Egypts that are calling for your allegiance calling for your loyalty There are some pharaohs who are saying you owe me but faith in a credible God allows us to forsake Egypt like Moses did. Faith in a credible God will give us the courage to forsake our Egypts in all their forms. Secondly, faith in a credible God will put courage in us so that we don't fear the wrath of the king. Now this text in Hebrews 11.27 seems at first to directly contradict Exodus 2.14. After Moses killed an Egyptian, you might recall, who was beating a Hebrew, Moses was confronted. And Exodus 2.14 says, So Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. But Hebrews 11.27 says he did not fear the wrath of the king. He was unafraid. There were times when Moses was afraid. And there were times when Moses was unafraid. Because Moses is like you and like me. Sometimes we're filled with fear. Other times we are full of courage. And we say to the king and anybody else who's listening, I ain't scared. Faith calls us to live more in confidence than in fear. And faith in a credible God puts steel in us and causes us to be able to stand and not fear the king. Let me give you a third and closing observation from Hebrews eleven twenty seven. Faith in a credible God enables us, enables us to see God when this credible God seems not to be visible. Colossians 1, 15 describes Christ as the image of the invisible God. This God who is not always seen can be beheld through the eyes of faith. The reason I ain't scared is because I've seen God. Moses had an enviable intimacy with God. I was reading some, uh, in preparation for this message, I was reading some passages which very, very clearly describe the relationship that Moses had with God. 
Exodus 33, 11. Just put it down in your notes if you're taking notes. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Wow. Did you hear that? Not everybody had that kind of relationship with God. But Exodus 33, 11 describes a relationship between Yahweh and Moses. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. There's a passage in Numbers in which Miriam and Aaron, Moses' siblings, were greatly criticizing Moses and speaking against him. And when God addressed Miriam and Aaron, this is, a great, this is a great passage. You need to read this in Numbers chapter 12. But when God addressed Miriam and Aaron about this, God explained, now you don't want to mess with my servant Moses because he and I have a relationship that I don't have with you or anybody else. Listen to Numbers chapter 12, beginning at verse 6. Then God said, Hear now my words. If there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak to him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You should be afraid. Because he and I are connected in a way that you and I are not. God says to Miriam and Aaron. As I close, I want to call on all of us to imitate Moses in this text in Hebrews 11.27. Let us go at life with a certain swagger. Not arrogant. But let us all be confident because we have seen God and he speaks to us. We hear his word. We can be confident and forsake that which is attractive to us and tempting to us and calls for our loyalty and allegiance. The Egypts, we can forsake the Egypts. Because God is for us. And we have seen him. God puts in us the ability to forsake Egypt. He makes us unafraid. And he helps us see. What would normally be not visible. <laughs> we might borrow the text of another classic hymn. As our prayer. Open my eyes. That I may see. Glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now. I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes. Illumine me. Spirit divine. Oh, that the Boldness of Moses might be ours. Oh, that you and I might say to the pharaohs and the Egypts, I turn from you and I'm not afraid of your wrath. For I've seen somebody and that somebody is God. I ain't scared. Let us pray. Holy God, we must confess at times we are cowards, spineless, Other times, we seem to have courage. Help us, we pray, 
to live more in confidence than in fear. Thank you for Moses who in this text was so bold as to turn his back on privilege. We pray that it might be said of us all. We thank you for what thou hast done in our behalf. We pray that we would love you more than the benefits and blessings which you provide. Help us to see thee and to know thee. We long for you to describe us as people to whom you speak and to whom you show yourself. I pray for those who might be among us those who might be watching us online, who are convinced they have no need of you. Those who have not only forsaken Egypt, but who have forsaken you, their creator. I pray that this would be the day they see their need and cry to you in repentance. I give myself to you. Thank you for the boldness of Moses. May it be ours. Thank you for the lack of fear described in this text. May it be ours. Thank you for Jesus the Christ who is fairer and more beautiful than any splendor of Egypt. Help us to embrace him, fairest of 10,000. We give you thanks. Amen. We leave today singing a great classic hymn. We pray that as you go from this place, you would make this your prayer. Lead on, O King Eternal. I, I, I don't know how to go where I'm supposed to go, but you, Eternal King, you, fairer than 10,000, you, brighter than any stars which I've seen, you can lead me. Please, lead me. If you're able, would you please stand and let us sing.
you there will be the rollout of our new website right after worship. Please go refresh yourselves and then come back in, and we're just going to have a tech talk uh, about how you can access that site. Would you please look up and receive the benediction? Now, beloved, go from this place unafraid, not because you're all that, but because the Lord is with you, and he gives courage to those who are afraid. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show his favor to you in all you do and in all you say. Go from this place rejoicing that whatever you're going to face, God goes before you and he's already where you're going. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord put steel in your spines. And the Lord calls his blessing to shower down upon you. Now, beloved, may the windows of heaven be open in your behalf. May the Lord pour out blessings you wouldn't even have room to receive. And as you face your Egypts, may you be able to forsake them because of the strength and courage which the Lord our God provides.